All right, good afternoon, my friends and followers. I'm your lawyer, Patrick McGinn, and I am your best friend at your worst time. Let's talk today about Zoom hearings. If you have a family law case or domestic violence case pending in South Florida and Dave Broward or Palm Beach County, and even some criminal cases in South Florida, you are going to have Zoom hearings. It's just that simple. The court has instituted Zoom hearings for these cases and there's even one circuit, I believe it's in Central West, Flor West Central Florida, that has basically said courts are going to be closed through December 31st, 2020. Um, I suspect that that'll happen with all courts in Florida, especially down here in South Florida, where we seem to be um, the number one place for the outbreak of the coronavirus or COVID-19. So that being said, let me, let me tell you a little bit about Zoom hearings and how they're going. If you have a family law case, particularly in Dave Broward or Palm Beach County or domestic violence case, stalking, petition, repeat violence petition, dating petition, anything like that, your hearings are gonna be held via Zoom. So that's just, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. A lot of attorneys, I'm shocked that we're in this for, what is this? It's been since March. So this is going on five months that we've been doing the virtual Zoom hearings and there are still a lot of lawyers that aren't on board with the technology. Um, I, I jumped right on it. I was ready to go up and remote as soon as the court shut down and I was fortunate. I had been looking in that direction for a while and it didn't take much to get me and my staff set up and fully remote as, they, as we are now offering full legal services. That being said, we've done a lot of Zoom hearings, particularly in family law, domestic violence and county level um, criminal court, especially in Palm Beach County. Done a lot of hearings in Palm Beach County at the, uh, at the, at the county criminal level. So let me give you an idea how these go. In some cases, when you have a motion calendar or you have a status conference, you're going to be sent a Zoom ID and password. And you could be in a room yourself, or you could be in there with everybody else that's on the docket. Like Palm Beach likes to do it with everybody on the docket. So you check into the Zoom hearing and there's lawyers and defendants, there's 40, 50, 60 people sometimes on these dockets. That being said, be careful of how you set up your Zoom. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. In the family law cases and the DV cases and the hearings, they're done, although court hearings are public, they are done in a Zoom room with the judge, the clerk, the court reporter, the bailiff, the attorneys, and the parties involved, and the witnesses. And some witnesses are held out until they're their, testi their testimony is needed in a particular case. So when you get this invitation and you check in with this room number and password, you're gonna be on like a waiting list to get in and the judge has to let you in. So if you have a hearing with just the parties, the lawyers, the judge and the court support staff, when your hearing time comes, say your hearing is at nine o'clock, you may not get in there right at nine o'clock because the judge may be doing a hearing beforehand. So it may be later than that. Whenever the judge gets done with his prior hearing, if you have the hearing first thing in the morning, you'll be, you should be in right away unless the judge is running late or something. So when the judge is ready for you, he'll let everybody in the room, the Zoom video and the, the audio will come up. You'll see the first person you'll see is the judge usually and everybody will check in on audio and video, or you can check in audio only. Um, if you don't have the video capabilities, you have to let the court know that, or you can check in by phone. A lot of the lawyers that are not up on the technology are doing it by phone, and I think that's a discredit to the case and their client. I think there's something said about being able to be seen by the court instead of just heard by the court. Okay, so when you have your Zoom hearing, be familiar with the technology. Download the app if you haven't already, if you've never heard of Zoom or if you've never used Zoom. Go to the App Store, the Play Store, wherever you get your apps at, and download the app and play with it for a while. 
make sure your audio and your video work. There's facilities in there, there's utilities in there for testing the audio in the, in the video to make sure it works. So make sure that your audio and video are up to par and your technology is up to par. Preferably have a backup. Like I have my computer that I sit in front of when I do the Zoom hearings. I also have my iPhone and now I'm getting phone calls. I also have I also have my iPad and iPhone ready to go in case I get booted off for some reason. I've had one hearing where my internet went down like right in the middle of the hearing. I was able to pick up my iPad, prop it up against the monitor and get on on cellular as opposed to the regular internet and get right back in without losing only just a few minutes without losing a step basically and have that ready. Realize that the technology can go down. It's not absolutely foolproof. My next tip for you would be set up some type of background. And this I've noticed, I've done a bunch of these hearings. I've done full blown trials through Zoom. I've done numerous hearings over the last five months and I've seen some things I'm gonna tell you about some tips that I think are important. Set up your virtual background because remember, in family court filings, the addresses, the court pleadings, which contain addresses of parties involved are public record. So if somebody wants to, they can get on the clerk site, search your case and find out your address. For example, I've been in hearings where people did not have a virtual background set up. You don't have to set up a virtual background. If you have a blank wall behind you, that is fine. But my point is, don't let anybody be able to see what is in your house or your office. So I had a couple hearings where the parties got on and they had this beautiful grand piano in the background. On the other side of the room was this beautiful oak and glass gun cabinet. All kinds of figurines looked like very valuable stuff. Somebody, the wrong person sees that kind of stuff, you know, you, you, you present on the video that you have all this expensive stuff in your home, it's easy enough to find your address and target you. I don't know anybody that's been targeted, but it just makes sense to me to not let people see what is in your home or office. So virtual background or blank wall behind you with nothing on it or very little on it. Another thing is get out of bed. Don't do your Zoom court hearing from in bed. Remember, court protocol and procedures still apply. If you look like you're in bed and your hair is a mess and you're laying down, the judge is going to call you out on it. And if you're in one of these Zoom rooms with you know, a bunch of other people, everybody's going to immediately start looking at your video feed. So number one, get out of bed. Number two, especially if you're a lady, make sure your PJs are secured while you're getting out of bed so you don't have a PJ malfunction because once the judge calls you out, everybody's gonna be looking at your video anyway. Keep that in mind. Dress appropriately for court. It's still court, the decorum of the court still applies even though it's Zoom hearings. It got so bad in Broward County that the chief judge had to issue an order for proper court attire during Zoom hearings. Don't let that happen to you. Don't have a PJ malfunction in front of everybody in court. So get up, out of bed, get dressed. I mean, just th throw on a, a t-shirt. You know, it doesn't have to be anything spectacular, but just, just be, you know, properly dressed for the court appearance. My next tip is be, you know, in part of being familiar with the technology and making sure it works, if you have to present evidence, documents, pictures, or anything in your case, have that lined up beforehand. What I do is I have a directory. Each case has a directory with subdirectories. All my trial exhibits and hearing exhibits are filed beforehand. So you have to individually file those exhibits so the judge can look at the same exhibits that you're talking about during the hearing. Have those exhibits in a directory listed in a, some logical order, exhibit number one, exhibit A, whatever. And then I put next to that what it is. 
So it may be exhibit number one, petition for dissolution of marriage. And I'll get my first five or six hearing or trial exhibits. I'll get those up in order, open on the computer desktop. So when you go to present those exhibits, you go to the share screen, you open the share, you click on the exhibit, and it immediately pops up for everybody to look at, to verify, so the clerk can make sure they're on the right page when they're entering your exhibit. And most of all, when you're talking about and discussing your exhibit, it'll be right there. I've seen a lot of attorneys and a lot of pro se people that represent themselves, pro se parties have to go digging through their computer looking for these exhibits, these papers, pictures, text messages, or whatever. And then they have problems, for number one, they have problems finding them in the first place. Number two, they have problems with the screen share, getting them up on screen. Be familiar with it. Miami-Dade County has on the court's website a informational pamphlet about how to enter evidence via a Zoom hearing. And it's a very good basic primer on the Zoom process as applies to these particular hearings. So have that, have your evidence ready, be familiar with the technology, get out of bed, be properly dressed, put up some type of background. The next thing I wanna tell you is make sure your lighting is good because a lot of judges wanna be able to see you, they wanna be able to see you completely, see your face, see your um, body language, your body posture, your movements during the hearing or trial. So make sure your lighting is correct. If you have, let's say, a big window behind you or a bunch of windows behind you that is letting in a lot of light and casting a shadow on your face, turn your computer or your whatever um, instrument you're using to connect the Zoom. Turn around with it so that you're facing the light so that you're lit up and the judge can see or close the blinds behind you so it's not drowning out your face. The judges, I didn't realize until recently I was involved in a, a week-long trial. And one of the observations that the judge made at the end of the trial is how one of the parties stood there stone-faced or sat there during the hearing stone-faced the whole time and had no emotion on their face, no body language, movements, anything for the whole week-long trial. And the judge pointed that out and it really struck a chord with him. So it's easy when you're sitting here just looking straight forward to become, you know, bored, be put in a trance, you know, whatever, and just watching while everything else is going on. But make sure, you know, make sure you move around, you show some emotion, you show some facial expression, just like you would if you were in court. And certainly when it is your time to testify, you know, show all the body language, the emotion, the facial expressions that is appropriate for your testimony, just like you would if you were alive in court. Don't sit there and be monotone about it. So that's my pointers for Zoom hearing. Let me think, are there any other pointers? Be on time, make sure your technology works, be appropriately dressed, have your case ready, have your case laid out. The way I lay out a case is I have my desk here in front of me, and then I have an extension and a return to the side. And I lay all my exhibits out in paper form because some, for trial, I just do better with paper form instead of you know, looking only at the computer. So I have it on the computer. I have it the first five or six exhibits ready to go. Then I have them all laid out, all the exhibits laid out in sequential order around me. So I can move from one side to the other and just refer to it. Okay, I'm looking at this, pull it over, and it's a nice way to organize, at least for me, uh, a case when it is going, going to trial or, you know, a hearing. And just, you know, be organized, be familiar with all the pleadings, all the filings, and all the evidence in your case, and it'll help you get through the process. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people, and uh, even attorneys that I see, they, they seem to get off on these tangents about you know the technology and the exhibits and they get caught up in all that and they lose their place. So I always post on the wall behind my, my, behind my computer monitor, I have a whiteboard and I write out the issues on the whiteboard of my case. Basically a flow chart for the case. So all I have to do is look up 
and I know where I'm at in the case, step one, step two, step three, however it goes. And that relates to the evidence I have laid out in front of me. So that may help you. Being uber organized will help you get through the Zoom hearing. It's new, it's new technology. Not a lot of people do it, certainly not in court. And it's a little, it can be a little intimidating and you can get frustrated easy because you're doing something new, you're not familiar with it. So the more familiar you are with it and the more prepared you are, the better you're gonna be able to perform and the better you perform, the better your case comes across. Because when it comes down to it, it's, it's basically a show. Whoever puts on the better case with the better evidence wins. I mean, in family law, you don't, in family law, I say nobody ever wins. Everybody loses. Just what degree do you lose? So that's it for family law. Domestic violence, same thing. Have everything ready to go. Your, uh, your criminal court hearings, same thing. As far as what I'm seeing in um, felony hearings and circuit court, they're just not going anywhere. Serious cases are just being rolled over and rolled over and rolled over constantly. If you have some type of motion, you can get it before a judge on a Zoom hearing. But as far as you know, big trials, big um, big motion hearings are just don't seem to be happening in criminal court. And the same thing with civil circuit court lawsuits and general contracts, uh, foreclosures, um, you know, all kinds of disputes, personal injury, all that stuff just seems to be sitting and rolling over and moving very, very slowly. Whereas family, family law and domestic violence are, seem to be up and running and that you can get hearings and you can move your case along just like you would if you had to go to court, if you had to walk into the courthouse. So that being said, what has the technology been able to do for us as a law firm? It allows me, I can handle, I usually schedule my court on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, all my Zoom hearings. I use Thursday and Friday to catch up. I can do more via Zoom on that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday that I could do in three, two or three weeks appearing personally. I can handle more hearings during those three days than I can handle in two or three weeks. It's cutting down on the expenses big time for my clients because they're not paying me to stand around and wait for judges. It's moving cases through a lot more efficiently. Um, I've even done cases where I've been on multiple Zoom hearings at the same time, where I'm on a hearing here with you, the judge, and then on my second computer, I have another hearing just waiting for the judge to come in and I can go between hearings, you know, just like you could go between courtrooms if you were in the actual courthouse. And it's just become very, very efficient. It's saving clients a boatload of money and it's allowing my law firm to handle more cases, uh, do a better job on them and to handle cases in other areas. Like now I'm handling cases in other areas of Florida that are doing Zoom hearings. And as long as they're doing Zoom hearings, I can handle the case from anywhere. You just never know where I may be. I may be here in Miami in my office or in my home, or I could be you know, in New York in a hotel. Well, I don't think they're gonna let us in New York because New York says people from Florida can't come up, but I could be in some other state in a hotel room doing the Zoom hearings and the same thing. And I've done that. I've done Zoom hearings from remote locations while I was on trips, you know, from hotel rooms and stuff. So it's really great technology. It's money saving technology and it, it can help you immensely if you're familiar and you're able to do it accurately. And chances are you get through whatever case it is you have filed. If you're a pro se party, you get through that case and hopefully you'll never have any other contact with the court system again and you don't have to worry about it. But, you know, do it once, do it big, do it well, and you don't have to go back and do do-overs. So that's it. If you think of anything, if you've had Zoom hearings, what, no matter where it's at, whatever state it's at, and you have any pointers that I can relay to my friends and followers, please let me know. But those are things that, that come that just jump right out at me and I made a list of them and I wanted them to discuss, wanted to discuss them with you. As always, please let me know if you have any comments or criticisms. You can find me on several social media platforms. 
Um, on Facebook, I have a Facebook group called Ask a Florida Divorce Lawyer, where we discuss divorce issues, child custody issues, domestic violence issues with members of that group. I have my law firm Facebook page, the law offices of Patrick McGee and PA, where you can find all kinds of contents related to the three areas of law that I practice, which are family law, which includes domestic violence, criminal defense, and personal injury, car accidents, truck accidents, only. I don't do slip and falls and stuff like that. I only do motor vehicle and trucking accidents. You can also find me on YouTube, your South Florida lawyer, Patrick McGeehan. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr, and Snapchat as the Magic City Lawyer, as well as Twitter at PJ McGeehan Law. You can find me there. I have over 100 videos posted on my YouTube channel and dispersed through my other platforms on those three areas of law. And everybody tells them tells me they're very, very helpful. So please feel free to check out those others. And of course, like and follow on any of those that you can. I would greatly appreciate it. If you have any comments regarding content that I could bring you that you think would be helpful, please let me know. You can DM me on any of those platforms. You can also reach out to me via email at patrick at pjmlawyer.com. Good luck in your case. Anything I can do to help you, please reach out to me. I have no problem at all scheduling consultations in the evenings after five o'clock or whatever, I can usually accommodate. It may take a few days to accommodate you, but I can accommodate you. And of course we are open full service taking cases and actually we've had an uptick in cases over the last two months, uh, especially in family law and domestic violence. That being said, have a great day. Know your Zoom.